Good day, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to our lecture number four on power electronics and drives. That is MCN 508. I am Kabir Ahmad Abudala. Today, we'll start looking at uh, DIAC, which is one of the switching uh, components of the power electronics. The DIAC is a device that has two terminals, T1 and T2, and it is a bidirectional or semi AS bidirectional semiconductor, a switching device. This means that it can conduct either from T1 to T2 or in the reverse direction, that is from T2 to T1. This device, it consists of two PNPN sections, as we can see from this diagram. This is the first one, PNPN, and this is the second one, PNPN. But they are connected in anti-parallel, as shown by these arrows, because the heights are opposite to one another. And this is this anti-parallel connection is the reason why it is bidirectional in nature and uh, as we have said it can conduct in both directions when the voltage which is applied across the device is less than the minimum voltage we call it breakover voltage when the voltage applied is less than this minimum then you will find that there is a very small amount of current that will be flowing through the device and this is what we call a leakage current. And as we already know, the leakage current is caused by the flow of minority charge uh, carriers. And this is what we call the non-conducting or blocking mode of the DIAC. But whenever the voltage is increased to exceed that minimum uh, breakover voltage, the diag will now turn on and it will start uh, conducting. And this is what we call the forward characteristics of the uh, diag. As you can see here, this is my T1 and this is my T2. In the figure A, my T1 is made positive with respect to T2. Therefore, the conduction is now from T1 to T2. But here, we reverse the polarity of our battery so the T1 is made negative with respect to uh, T2. Therefore, the conduction is in the reverse mode. That is from T2 to T1. And that is what we mean by saying it is a bidirectional uh, device. Now, that is the figure A and B I've already explained. The uh, reverse characteristics of this uh, diag is obtained when we supply a voltage and the voltages are identical to the forward characteristics because the device is symmetrical as we have seen here. Symmetrical in the sense that in whichever mode you, op I mean, connect it, it will conduct and it will give you similar uh, current voltage uh, relationship. In both cases, that is in A and B, when T1 is positive and when T1 is negative, you find that the diac will exhibit what we call negative uh, resistance switching characteristic. What we mean by negative uh, resistance uh, switching characteristics, it is a situation where the current of the device will keep on increasing while the voltage decreases. And for us to understand this, let us come to this diagram. You can see in the first uh, diagram that is when it is conducting with T1 positive you find that the current will remain very small that is the leakage current before we reach our minimum voltage that is the breakover voltage so the moment that uh, voltage is reached you find that your current will start rising while the voltage is coming back that is the voltage is decreasing that is what we mean by negative uh, resistance characteristics and in the opposite direction that is when t2 is made positive the same thing happened you find that as the voltage increases before reaching the breakover the 
current is very small, that's the leakage current. But the moment we reach the breakover, the current will now start increasing with the decrease of the voltage. And this uh, uh, device, that is the diode, the main function, the main place where it is used is for triggering the triads. We are going to see triads now. Triggering the triads means supplying the gate voltage required for or the gate current required for the triad to be pushed into operation. So the triad, on the other hand, from even from the name, it is a three terminal device and it is also a bidirectional switch. We already know what is a bidirectional. That is, it can conduct in both directions when it is triggered into the conduction uh, state. And the triac is equivalent to two silicon control rectifiers, which are connected in anti-parallel mode, just like we can see from this diagram. Here we have three terminals. We have MT1, we have MT2, and we have the gate, where we supply our control signal for us to trigger it into operation. And it consists of uh, three terminals, as I've already explained. And as we can see here, it is met with combination of P and N type materials. So here you can see we have P1, N1, P2, N2, P3, and even N4 and P4. As you can see, this is a three dimensional uh, diagram of the uh, triad. And this MT1 is the reference terminal. And it is the one that we supply our voltage together with the currents applied at the gate in order to get the characteristics of the triac. And this triac can be operated in four different modes. That is, for you to push it into conduction, we have four different modes. And these modes are divided into four based on the polarity of the a voltage at the MT2 terminal with respect to M1 and based on the polarity of the current, either it is positive or negative. And the characteristic cup of a triac when plotted, it is similar to that of silicon control rectifier, but when it is operating in blocking mode, that is when it is off, and in conducting mode, that is when it is uh, conducting, that is when it is on. But the only difference between the SCR and the triac is that the SCR can conduct in only one direction, but the triac we have seen, it is a bidirectional device, which means it can conduct in two uh, directions. Now, let us start looking at this mode of operation of the SCR. The first one, we call it mode one. And this is a mode, or this is a condition where the MT2, does the voltage at MT2 is positive, and the current at the gate is also positive. This is what we call mode 1 operation. When you make the MT2 positive and the current at the gate also positive, then you find that the gate current will flow through P2 and 2 junction, that is from this diagram, this is my P2 and this is my N2 and the terminal of the battery, the positive one, goes to the gate that is connecting to the P2. So when this arrangement is made, you find that the current will now flow from P2 to N2. So in this condition, the PN, uh, the P1N1, that is this junction, between P1 and N1 is forward bias because the voltage here is positive. And also the P2 N2, as we have explained, is also forward biased because the voltage here is also positive. But the junction between N1 and P2 is reverse bias. That is between this N1 and the P2, the junction is reverse biased. So in this condition, 
whenever you have sufficient enough number of charge carriers which are injected in P2 layer from this voltage supplied through the gate, when we have enough charge carriers in the P2 layer, then you find that the N1 P2 junction, which is reverse bias, will now be pushed into breakdown condition. And as we have seen previously, whenever the uh, PN junction is in bre uh, uh, breakdown condition, you find that it will be conducting exponentially, just like in the forward uh, mode. So when that happens, the triac will now start conducting through this arrangement that is from P1 to N1 to P2 and then to N2 layers. And the moment this happens, the conduction starts in the triac, you find that the current will start increasing and the voltage current uh, characteristics of the triac is very similar to that of the thyristor. And whenever you have your triac operating in this first mode, it is operating in the first quadrant. What we mean by operation in the first quadrant, it means that both the current and the voltage are positive, uh, are of positive values. Now, the second mode, that is mode two of the triac, is the mode created when MT2 is positive, just like in the previous one, but the gate current is made uh, negative. And when that happens, you find that the junction between P2 and N3, as we can see from this diagram, that is the junction between P2, this is my P2, and this is my N3. The junction between the these two is supposed to be a uh, forward bias now. And the junction P1, N1, and the P2, N3, as I've mentioned, they are forward bias, but N1, P2 is reverse bias, just like in the other case. That is, N1, P2 is reversed while the remaining are forward bias. So in this case, you find that the triac will now start conducting through these layers, that is, from P1, N1, P2 to N3, as we can see from this diagram. P1, N1, P2 down to entry. That's the initial uh, conduction. Uh, and as a result of the potential which is applied between the P2 and entry, when it's that potential rises, then you find that its potential will be close to that of MT2. And this potential gradient will now exist across the layer P2 with the left-hand region at a higher potential than the right-hand region. What we are seeing is that as the poten potential keeps on increasing, the conduction will now reverse to the right-hand side, that is from P1, N1, P2, N2, against the first one, which is between P1, N1, P2, and N3. Uh, then, the current will now be flowing through P2, N2, that is in forward bias mode, and the right hand will now take over the conduction. And whenever the device is operating in this second mode, you find that it is also in the first quadrant. That is, both the current and the voltage are positive. And when you compare this mode 2 with mode 1, you find that the MT2 is positive and the gate current is negative. So this one is less sensitive than the one in mode 1 where the MT2 is positive and the current at the gate is also positive. So because of this low sensitivity, there is need of a higher current for triggering the triac in this uh, mode. Then the third mode, which is mode 3, it is achieved when MT2 is made negative and the current at the gate is made uh, positive. So when this happens, you find that 
the MT2 is negative and the gate is uh, positive with respect to the junction MT2, as you can see from this diagram. Then the junction between P2 and N2 is forward bias and P1 N1 is reversed bias. That is P2 N2, forward bias, while P1 N1 is reversed bias. Then our layer N2 will now start injecting electrons. This is the layer N2, and it will start injecting electrons into the uh, P2, then it will cross to uh, N1. And this current that has been injected will cause increase in the current flow in the junction between P2 and N1 here. And this will cause a breakdown of the reverse bias N1 P1 junction, which is initially reversed, but because of increase in the current flow between P2 and N1, you'll find that this junction between N1 and P2 will reach its breakdown condition which means the current will start also increasing exponentially. So the device will now start conducting through this arrangement. That is P2 down to N1, down to P1, then to N4. And this current will continue to increase. The only thing that will limit the current is the external load connected. The device in this mode is said to be operating in the third quadrant. And in the third quadrant, that is where the voltage and the current, all of them are uh, negative. So the triac, when it operates in this mode also, it is less sensitive. And of course, it requires higher current for triggering it into uh, action. Now, the next one and the last mode is mode number four. And in this case, the MT2 is met negative, while the gate current is also met negative, which means all of them are negative. And this, uh, in this case, as shown in this diagram, you can see that my MT2 is negative, and the negative terminal is connected to the uh, gate. And our layer entry will now start injecting electrons because entry is uh, n-type and it is connected to the uh, negative terminal of the battery and for this reason it will start pushing out electrons into the p2 uh, layer and because of these uh, electrons which are pushed they will now create increase in current in the junction between p2 and n1 and this current will now flow between P1 and N1 junction, that is between P1 and N1. And the device will now be turned on and it will keep on increasing the current in the N1 layer because of these electrons which are ejected by uh, entry, uh, I mean, uh, layer. So this current will now flow through this arrangement that is from P2, it will go into N1, into P1 and then into N4. And in this mode, the uh, triac is more sensitive than when you compare it to when it is turned on with positive uh, get current. That is our motor number three. So these are the four modes of triggering the triac into operation. And the sensitivity of triac in all these four modes we have seen it has greater sensitivity in the first quadrant when it is turned on with a positive gate current. And in the third quadrant, when it is turned off on with negative uh, gate current. That is the sensitivities are detected more in first quadrant and in the third quadrant. And in a situation where this MT2 is made positive with respect to MT1, so it is recommended that you should turn on the triac by positive gate current. That is, whenever the polarity of MT2 with respect to MT1 is positive, so the recommendation is that the gate current should also be a positive. But in a situation where MT2 is negative with respect to MT1, then the current required for the triggering, the recommended should be negative uh, gate current.
And therefore, in this case, you find that the mod number one and the mod number four are the most preferred modes for operating the uh, triac. That is where we have positive uh, gate current and negative mode current in the first mode of operation and the last mode of operation. So the next thing is to look at the uh, signal characteristics of the current voltage relationship for the triac. This is the diagram that we use for obtaining the characteristic. This is my triac. This is MT1 terminal and this is MT2 terminal and this is my gate. And normally we connect a positive voltage to the gate so that we get positive current according to this recommendation we have just seen. And we connect a positive terminal to MT2 with respect to MT1. But in a situation, if you want to obtain the characteristic in the third quadrant, this one is for the first quadrant, the supply to the gate current, that's the polarity of this battery, should be reversed. And also the polarity of the voltage between MT2 and MT1 should be reversed. That is, these two batteries should be uh, reversed. Now, this triac, as we have said, is bidirectional. It can conduct in both directions, and its characteristics are identical in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant, as we can see in this uh, diagram. Here in the first quadrant, you can see when the voltage starts increasing before reaching the breakover voltage, you find that there is a very small amount of current flowing, that is the leakage current. When you reach the breakover voltage, the current will now start gradually rising with the voltage decreasing until you reach the second turning point where the current will be rising exponentially or it will be increasing rapidly with the voltage also gradually rising. That is in the first quadrant and the same thing applies in the third quadrant. We have already seen that the best modes of operation are in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. So the whenever the gate current is increased, you find that the breakover voltage will decrease. That is, if you want to supply a small voltage to put the triac in operation, make sure you increase the amount of the current applied at the gates. And this triac is a switching device that is used in many applications. One of them is it is used in controlling the speeds of single phase induction motors. It is used in domestic lamp dimmers, and it is used in heat control circuits, and of course it is used in full wave AC uh, voltage controllers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of uh, lecture number four. Thank you very much for your time. As usual, try to watch this video over and over again till we meet in the next lecture. Thank you.